In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can use sharpening to even out rough textures and pores and go from here to here with ease. Hi again, Michael Volshinovich here from Vibrant Shot. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash vibrantshot and also vibrantshot.com. So in this tutorial, we're going to be doing something kind of non-intuitive. We're going to use sharpening to reduce texture or essentially fix texture. So oftentimes we'll have a situation where we have a model that has, you know, like really strong pores and they just don't kind of look right with the rest of the face. Uh, now, unfortunately, this is the best example I could find because I guess I've been blessed with models with really good skin. So um, this isn't a particularly bad case, but essentially this will demonstrate what we're trying to fix. So we have these like bright dots over here and that will often be exaggerated. We'll actually run into situations where it's much worse um, and we just have these big pores. So we're going to try and reduce this as best as we can uh, without kind of manually going through and healing all of this out, which can often be quite difficult because it just doesn't ever really fit with the rest of the texture. So we're going to try and automate the process a little bit. Here we also have this uh, forehead area here, which I think is a little bit harsh, and we kind of want to just reduce that down and uh, make it blend again better with some of the rest of the texture on the face. So what we're going to do now, luckily for you again, as always, I have provided an action so you can uh, make this whole thing fairly painless. Uh, but I'm going to go through the steps with you at least the first time because we're actually going to do two separate rounds. We're going to do one on the cheek here and then we're going to do a separate one on the forehead. So first time I'm going to show you manually how to do it and the second one we're going to run the action to do it. So the first thing you need to do is just duplicate your layer twice. So hit command or control J on your you know main layer twice. And you can call these layers whatever you want. So we can just say sharpen, for example, and uh, call the top one D sharpen. So we're just going to disable our D sharpen one. We're going to go into our sharpen layer and we're going to use filter sharpen unsharp mask. Now, um, for those of you that don't know how unsharp mask works, I'm going to kind of summarize things quickly because it's important to know what we what we need to set here to actually make this all work. If you do know how it works, just fast forward like a minute or two and you'll get to something more interesting. But basically the amount obviously is just the absolute amount of sharpening. So if you crank this up, it just, you know, goes up or down and uh, does more sharpening or less sharpening. So just keep that at 100%. Um, don't really go over 100 and don't go under 100. Just leave it at 100%. For radius, uh, this basically specifies what, how large a set of pixels is it going to look at to perform essentially its contrasting, because that's all sharpening is, it just builds contrast. So if we, you know, go down to one pixel, it's just going to build contrast around each pixel. If we go up to something like 100 pixels, we can see that it's going to build contrast around a really large area. Like we can see that it's taking a whole ton of pixels over here and building contrast around them to try and sharpen. So. Uh, we want to essentially find a radius that is going to nicely sharpen the offending area. So, you know, this, how kind of, how big is the pore that we're trying to fix? The threshold, on the other hand, is how big of a difference does there have to be between, you know, one spot and another spot, or essentially one pixel and another pixel, before it starts to sharpen that. So, the lower your threshold is, the less difference there has to be. So, at zero, obviously, there's, like, no difference. So, just sharpen everything, like, every single thing you encounter apply you know this radius of sharpening with this amount to that area as you kind of go up with this it's going to just sharpen only the areas where there is a big difference uh, between you know one and the other so if we crank this up to something like uh, 20 we can see that it pretty much has almost no effect on any of the image except for the um, actual lashes here because obviously there's a huge difference between the black of the lashes and the pink that's around it so what we basically need to do is we need to find values that will target and sharpen the particular area we want to remove. So we know that, you know, these areas are, they're not terribly big. So our radius isn't going to be huge either. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to keep cranking the slider until it stops uh, having an effect. So before we do that, though, let's just kind of drop our threshold to something where we can see what we're doing here. And now let's just kind of keep bringing this up until we get to the point where it doesn't really make too much of a difference anymore uh, because you know at a certain point it will actually stop making a difference so as we kind of keep going here we see that now it's really not making any difference because we've, we've kind of maxed out so let's just find an area where it stops so it looks like 
around, you know, nine, nine and a half, ten. That that looks like it's pretty good. Now the threshold, we need to again adjust this to the point where it's not sharpening anything that is around the area that we want to fix. So all of these little bits of texture, we want to keep those. So we don't want to actually sharpen them. So you have to basically kind of think the opposite way. So whatever gets sharpened is going to get removed and whatever doesn't get sharpened is going to stay. So we're going to go through here and we're just going to kind of keep nudging our threshold until uh, it gets to the point where it's taking too much away from the area we want to remove. So we can see at 17 now we really lost. So let's just kind of keep going back now and it looks like we're kind of hovering in this area of 9 or 10. So let's just go with um, 9 over here, or maybe 10, let's see. Yeah, let's go with 9. Okay. So that's going to essentially sharpen that up, and if we kind of toggle that on and off, we see that we've sharpened up those, um, those pores there. Now we're going to go to our desharpen layers, turn that on. We're going to go to Image, Apply Image, and the values will again differ depending on if you're in 8-bit mode or 16-bit mode. But again, I've created two separate actions. So just select the right one for your bitrate. Make sure that sharpen is your layer, your source layer here. And uh, for 8-bit, for right now I'm in 8-bit, I'm going to select subtract blending, scale of 2 offset 128, and no invert. Click OK there. And then we are going to select linear light as our blend mode. Get rid of our sharpen. And now you can kind of see what this is doing. It's really just offsetting that bright texture. Now, obviously, we don't want to apply this everywhere, so we're just going to hit um, hold down Option or Alt, add a layer mask, and grab a brush. And then we're just going to paint in the area we actually want to apply it to. So let's just kind of brush it into here. There we are. And now toggling on and off, you can see that we just kind of reduce that texture and it just fits a heck of a lot better with everything else that's here. Now what we can also do is let's just toggle our mask here and let's see what else it affects. So if we kind of turn this on, we see that it's getting rid of some of these really bright dots in this area here. So if you didn't want those dots, again, just mask in that area and it will get rid of them. You can also see that it's actually reducing some of these hairs here. So if you have fine hairs on the face, it can also be useful for that. So if we didn't want to get, if we wanted to get rid of those, we can brush in that area as well. So anyways, I'm pretty happy with that particular section there. So we're going to now move on to the forehead and we're going to run our action to fix that one. So let's create a stamp of this. And then we're going to go to our actions panel here. Let's just go into button mode. And we've got two actions here. So we've got this VS texture reduce 8-bit and 16-bit. So we're going to, we're going to reduce, uh, we're going to run the 8-bit because we are in 8-bit mode. And it's just going to ask us to specify our unsharp mask values. So they're going to be different in this case because, um, again, the texture is different. So what we're going to do now, we're going to keep uh, amount at 100%. And then we are going to nudge this around until we're happy. So let's just kind of see what we need here. So um, at this point, you know, we can see, we see that we're still adding more sharpening. So let's just kind of keep this going. At 9, I think that's looking pretty good. Beyond 9, it's really not doing much, so let's just stick to 9. And then for our threshold, again, let's kind of just keep nudging this. So 18 was too far. I think that took out too much texture. Here we're too low. We, we are still actually, you know, getting rid of some of these fine lines, which we don't want. So let's just kind of keep nudging it until those fine lines are no longer sharpened. And it looks like around... 14 should be pretty good. We're, we're not really targeting those too much. And just toggle your preview on and off. We can see that we're really kind of targeting those hard lines that are in here. So that should be pretty good. Let's just go ahead and click OK there. Now it's going to automatically create this uh, for us here. So once again, if we kind of toggle this on and off, we can see what it's doing. And let's go ahead and brush this back in again. All right, there we go. So let's kind of toggle that on and off, and we can see that it has essentially reduced down that particular area. Again, we can kind of see, you know, is that helping anything else? And in this case, this radius doesn't really help too much else. So actually, some of these little dots around here, we can see that, you know, because we chose different values, now these little dots here are actually going to be affected. So we could technically brush in some of these areas here if we wanted to even that out. But I think I'm pretty happy with that at this point. So let's just create a stamp of that. And let's take a look and see how this all came out. 
So at 50%, actually, I guess I'll have to zoom out a little bit more. Let's toggle that on and off. We can just see that now it's just helping to blend that texture a little bit better with the rest. It's just not quite as harsh and it just feels like it fits with the image a lot better. So go ahead and download the actions for that. They're going to pop up somewhere down here below. That will take you to the downloads page and play around with it. Uh, hopefully it works well for you. And uh, essentially all we're really doing here is we're kind of emulating the dust and scratches trick that you can do inside of frequency separation, but we're doing it in a much more intelligent manner. And it also helps to get around some of the artifacting that's often created when you're doing dust and scratches. So again, experiment, make sure you find the right radius and the right threshold. And until the next video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel below and also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash vibrant shot. Bye for now.